the so-called accommodation agreement was no more or no less than the terms that the government had already agreed to give to Mr. Prosser or had already given to uh, Mr. Prosser. And the purpose of it was to borrow the money to buy the shares, to reorganize it quickly, and to find an international buyer. And so the cost of those shares was somewhere between 100 and 120 million US dollars at that time. But the accommodation agreement was an integral part. We managed to obtain an offer from an international telephone company, Cable and Wireless, for over 300 million dollars. But it needed the government to agree that purchase. And that then fell into problems that the government decided that they didn't like the accommodation agreement. Had that agreement gone ahead, there would have been a profit of over 200 million US dollars that would have been converted into Belize dollars for the benefit of Belizean charities and the employees. Mm -hmm. The problem has now been that because it has taken seven years in order to get to a point of compensation, and now with funding interest, there is very little profit that has been left. And I think it has been a very sad case of what has happened through the particular process. It's important to understand that this was a settlement agreement mm -hmm. uh, in which, we, which uh, Carlisle agreed to waive certain claims that it had on the government and release it from some of the warranties that were given by the government and in return were given certain tax concessions. And that was then challenged uh, by the government and went right the way up to the Caribbean Court of Justice. But one of the clauses within that settlement agreement was that the government of Belize would take all necessary effects, uh, all necessary steps to affect that agreement. And what the Caribbean Court of Justice said is that the government failed to put it through to the House of Representatives. And on that particular basis, uh, they couldn't enforce it. So, uh, uh, so because it's a London award, Carlisle does have the option of enforcing it in any jurisdiction. So though the Belize courts may say it is against public policy, we've shown that in the US courts and the UK courts, they've taken a different view on public policy. So that one sits now that, uh, that Carlisle does have the permission of the courts of the US to take it to the next stage. Now, where it goes from, from here, we don't know, and Carlisle will discuss that with its advisors as to where to go, mm -hmm. uh, and or, at some point, there may be some sensible discussion with the government of Belize uh, in order to compromise it and get it out of the way, but who knows what the future holds. So you holds. would be willing to settle? I have always said that on all these cases, uh, there's always a willingness to find a settlement, and I'm a great believer in compromise, and I'm a great believer in the old Chinese expression that you always give the other person face. Mm -hmm. In other words, you don't try to uh, humiliate one side or the other.